Hello and welcome! I assume you're here because you want the Risk Taker Trophy. Well, I'm here to explain how it works. I'll show you what challenges I put on, what abilities I used, all that jazz. But honestly, I wish you luck. This trophy is not easy. For this game, you'll want to start a new game, and I cannot stress this enough, pick beginner. It will be a nightmare otherwise. Before the game properly begins, you'll be asked if you want to play the game as normal, if you want to play it with the easy fast pass codes, or if you want to play it with the pro codes. The pro codes are the ones you need. The trophy wants you to get the highest rank in this mode, which is A rank. I'm not sure the exact amount you need to clear, but it's between 360,000 and 369,000. My guess is 360 or 365,000. But I'll tell you what, seeing it jump from rank to rank is very satisfying. Anyway, so how does this work? So if you go into the menu, you can see a list of worlds, and if you press square, square or triangle, I forget which, um, you can see the bosses that will give you points. If you already completed them, it just shows it, but if you haven't, you can see what they are. The biggest challenge with this, even on beginner, is because they're main story bosses, you can't refight them. So you're going to have to go big very early to ensure you have enough points by the end. Each of the pro codes have a set number of stars, which correspond to difficulty. So for example, no cure or default status are five stars, because they're going to make the bosses a pain. For midworld bosses, each star equals 125 points, giving you a maximum of 5,000 points for each battle, and each endworld boss, each star doubles that, giving you 250 per star and 10,000 maximum, as you can see here. I personally did not go for the maximum. I put on everything but form changes and grand magic, which cost me 500 or 1,000 points each round. Just because this is beginner, do not be fooled. Unless you're really good or get really good, this is going to be tough. You'll have no items, no curing, no attractions, no defense. Your attack stats will be the lowest they can be. Your only saving grace here will be carrying over ultimate blade and ultimate form, which will help a lot. It will also enable you to be able to use rage form, which is a godsend in these fights, as it will be the only way to cure. But you do not need to have these codes on outside of these bosses if you don't want, so you can get through some of the more challenging enemy segments with ease and without worry. Now during this there are exceptions where I had to give myself a little extra something. For the unversed lump of horror and marshmallow, I had to take off no shot lock, which was 2 stars, which was 250 or 500 points depending on the boss. These fights were just breaking me, so I had to give myself something else. They are very tough fights. Again, just because this is beginner, don't think you'll be having an easy ride. All these restrictions basically force you to play a level 1 mode. However, to compensate with the Lightning Angler and Dark Baymax, I actually turned all codes on because I couldn't transform anyway, and they're not that hard. Tip for Dark Baymax, literally just spam attack. You get stunned way too easily and you'll be fine. Keyblade Graveyard is where I started to make things a little easier on myself. I actually gave myself attack stats back. Whilst I still have no defences and cures, I have been levelling up throughout the game, so my attack is pretty good, and it really helped do damage super quickly. I kept my stats the same for Scala and Remind, because those bosses are done in phases, so even if you die, it's not that much to redo. So I felt comfortable not needing defences and curing. After beating the main game, I fully recommend going to the battle gates in Olympus at the beginning of Olympus and grinding to level 99. Trust me, you will want to because it is time for the secret bosses. So I did do something a little differently. With Dark Inferno, the data battles and Jizura, I had this setup. I turned off no defenses, I turned off default statuses so I can attack powerfully. I gave myself transformations and for the first time, I gave myself battle items. I didn't ever use anything like an elixir, but high potions really helped me stay alive during most of these. And with Yazura, I actually turned off MP slip and no links. Ariel is a godsend to avoid the attack that drains all your items and your HP. It, oh, I can't tell you enough how helpful that is. And that's that. With that setup, you'll have enough points. You can even take things on or off here and there if you're struggling. The data battles and Jizura will give you double the points of previous battles, so you can compensate here and there, but obviously they are much, much harder. But at the same time, you can actually refight them at any point, so if you find some of the earlier fights in the game that are battles you can't redo really difficult and you just want to give yourself a little extra something, you can just try and grind out the data battles and you'll be fine in that regard. You'll learn them and you'll beat them eventually and that will be the compensation. 
Some bosses are harder than others, but I believe in you, you got this. Finally, I want to show you the abilities I had on, since it's helpful to have a reference for what is truly a priority, but obviously you can work with whatever you want, mine is just little helpful guidelines. Actually, when I first saw this challenge and saw ability limit, it says a maximum limit of 30 is placed on abilities, I thought that meant 30 AP. No, it means 30 abilities, which was the biggest relief when I realised that. So, um, I recommend aerial recovery, really helpful for just recovering quickly. Payback Strike is really good, good move after an aerial recovery, you're gonna need it. Blocking, obvious. Um, counter Slash, really good after um, after blocking. There are other attacks you can use instead of Counter Slash, I just think Counter Slash is really good, it helps you get to the enemy quickly. Quick Slash, good, good upward slash, uh, same with Flash Step, really good to get an, a far away target. All of these are basically, I think, the new abilities that the game gave you. They're really good for dealing out damage and they're really good for just getting to the enemy quickly. Um, can recommend all of these. Uh, you only need a couple of combo finishes, but I recommend these ones. Honestly, I had Rising Spiral. I didn't ever really use this that much. You probably won't need it too often. So you could very easily switch this out for something else. You don't need any of the unison moves. They're not really going to make a difference. If you've got no shot locks, then this is, Im this is not important. I found that I was not once using any flow motion attack, so I just took off everything to do with flow motion. I really like being able to high jump, I like being able to double jump, obviously dodge roll is a blessing. Air slide is really good, you only need one of them. Aerial dodge, do not put this on. In combat, aerial dodge means you do a little, essentially dodge roll in the air of sorts. Um, instead of doing a full-on dash. I find the dash is much more helpful as it helps you get away further. I think Aerial Dodge gives you a couple of invincibility frames, but being a, a quote-unquote coward and running away is actually a more efficient way of dealing with things, I found. Glide is very handy. Flow motion stuff you won't need. Obviously, we're not going to put zero experience on. That's insane. I mean, scan you technically don't need, but also you want. Um, MP safety, for the majority you're not going to be using magic, um, that's really effective for curing, so you won't need this. Um, healing items and magic on friends, screw your friends, you don't need them. Magic lock on is helpful, actually near the end I found that I wasn't really using magic, so you could take this off. Combo plus is good, just because it's always good to do a little bit more. Uh, combo boost and air combo boost, really good. Combo master, really handy. Uh, reprisal boost, really good as well, very handy indeed. Since you're not going to be curing, you won't need Leaf Bracer, but you will need second chance with withstand combo, absolutely. A lot of stuff like Treasure Magnet, boosting in fire and whatnot, uh, Block Replenisher, um, MP Haste, all these extenders, you're really never going to use them because this isn't the type of fight you're fighting, you're not utilising this stuff. And then finally, it's just damage control. Um, halves the damage you take when your HP is 25% or below. You'd be a fool not to put these on. Really handy. So this is what I put on. I mean, as you saw, it wasn't even perfect. There were a couple of things in hindsight that I could have taken off and replaced with something else. Um, but this is just generally what I put on. And obviously, you're not going to have all these straight away. You'll be unlocking them as you level up. So you can take things on and then take them off and whatnot. And it, as I say, you don't have to follow these specific attacks. It's, it's down to what you personally preferred. But I hope this guide was helpful to show you how you get an A rank in the game, because yeah, it's it's not easy, in fact it is really hard, but you can see here that yeah, it's it's totally doable, and and yeah, we, Yuzora I got 13,000 points, and you don't need to get the highest amount for Yuzora, and yeah, the, the fights are they're fun, they're fun battles to do, and hey, you've created a beginner save file where you can absolutely rage on all these fights, real easily um so you know if uh if you want to take out some stress beginner mode's the way to do it it's real fun so thank you very much for watching i hope you have enjoyed the video if it has helped you i would appreciate it if you left a like subscribe share the video around i also have a twitch a twitter and a patreon if you want to support me and the channel uh but thank you very much for watching good luck you're gonna nail it it's probably the final trophy for you to get um, if you've done your Zora and whatnot, and if not, well, you're gonna get the Yazora trophy through this anyway, so good luck, I believe in you, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>